Good afternoon. Okay, all right. Hello, Jorge. Good afternoon. Hello, Mr. Guetta. How are you today? I'm fine. You're fine? That's really nice to hear. How was your weekend? You? I'm pretty good, you know, even though it's Monday. And sometimes Monday are, are very difficult, you know, but I'm okay. Yes. Yes, right? <laughs> so it's nice it's to see good. you. Yes. Challenge. Difficult in a traffic. Yeah, uh, right. The beginning, the difference. I know. The same for me, you know, there are some times in which I need to come to my office. For example, today I'm from my office. So it's very hard, you know. Sometimes I'm from home, but today I'm from office. So it's a little bit difficult sometimes. You should be translate to <laughs> your office. Mm -hmm. It's complicated. Yes, it is. It is mostly in the morning. In the morning, it's very hard because of traffic. But it's really nice to see, right? <laughs> yes, it is. It is always, you know. I can see Janira in Josue. Creo que el que dice so. admin es Ruth, ¿verdad? Admin. Ruth, no me equivoco. Yes, right? Yes. Yeah. She's the one, exactly. So, let's wait just one more minute. Un minuto más. There we go. I can see Gabby. Gabby is in the class already. Hi, Gabby. Hi, teacher. How are, How are you? I'm good. And you? I'm good too, but I feel a little bit sad. <laughs> Why? I don't know the, the, the weather. The weather, yes. <laughs> <laughs> the weather, yes, you know. Because I need, it, I need my bed. Ah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I miss my bed too, right? <laughs> yes, I was telling Jorge because he was asking me. Jorge me preguntaba y yo le digo, yes, Mondays sometimes is very hard, you know, to yes. start the day because of the weather, because it's Monday. But don't you worry, you know, sometimes I feel the same. So thank you so much for being here. It's time to start with this class. Let me ask you, last Thursday, last class, we were practicing a topic that for some of you, it was a little bit hard, you know? Fue un poquito difícil el último tema. The simple present tense, simple present tense. And the idea for today is to start the class asking you about the simple present tense, you know? Because we are going to move to different topics and I want you to make those questions, make the topic clear so we can continue with different topics. La idea es iniciar la clase con el simple present tense, un pequeño repaso para que cualquier duda podamos aclararlas, okay? Si se recuerdan, simple present tense. ¿Para qué lo usamos? Simple present tense. Simple present tense. O present simple, le llaman algunas personas. ¿Para qué usamos esa estructura en inglés? Uh -huh. ¿Para hablar de cosas en pasado? ¿Será? No, All right. Cosas en presente. Cosas en presente. Más que todo, 
cosas que son repetitivas, que repetimos cada día. Routine. Como la idea, para que ustedes tengan la idea. Situations, activities that we repeat every day. For example, si yo les digo, I wake up at 5 a.m. in the morning. Es una actividad que hago from Monday to Saturday. La hago cada día hasta el sábado. Si se fijan, la hago siempre en el presente, pero repito la misma actividad. I wake up on Mondays at 5 a.m. I wake up on Tuesdays at 5 a.m. I go to work on Monday. I go to work on Tuesday. I go to work on Wednesday. I repeat the same action one day, the next day, and so on. So that is the simple present, right? And there are some activities that I do, but eh, I stop doing those activities. Hay actividades que las hago y las dejo de hacer. Entonces, cuando paro de hacer esa actividad, se convierte en pasado, en past. Eso quiero que tengan presente. ¿Cuál es el simple present? Más que todo lo, lo usamos para hablar de rutinas, actividades que repetimos bien constantes. Right. Y no solo constantes, pueden ser actividades que inician en un año y pueden durar por años y acabar 10 años después, 5 años después. Pero como yo la estoy repitiendo cada día, siempre va a ser el simple present tense. Right. Un buen ejemplo es, when did you start studying English? ¿Cuándo empezaron a estudiar inglés? When did you start studying English? ¿En qué año? When was it? ¿Cuándo fue que empezaron a estudiar inglés? Last year, two years ago, this year, when was it? On February. Uh -huh. On? On February. Veamos. Si se fijan en una acción que inició en el pasado. When did you? Start in English. When did you start studying English? ¿Cuándo empezaron a estudiar inglés? Digamos que fue on February. On February, as somebody mentioned there. ¿Es una acción que ya terminó o que se va a seguir repitiendo? Ok. We are going to continue. Se va a seguir repitiendo. ¿Hasta cuándo? ¿Cuándo creen que es su meta para hablar por lo menos inglés intermedio avanzado? ¿Cuándo mm -hmm. se pone ustedes de meta? When? 20. Pongámosle next year, right? No seamos negativos. Next year, I'm going to be speaking English fluently. Right, so if you see, puede tomarnos hasta un año de repetir la misma actividad y siempre nosotros vamos a expresar esa actividad en el presente simple. I study or I am studying English. English. I am studying English today, Monday. Mañana, ¿qué vamos a decir? I am studying English. El miércoles, I am studying English, right? O podemos decir, I study English. Yo estudio inglés. Ambas maneras de expresarlo en presente progresivo porque está pasando ahorita a la 1 y 7 p.m. o en general. Yo estudio inglés. Simple present. So, esa es la idea del simple present para hablar de acciones rutinarias más que todo. Simple present tense. And we have some rules. Teníamos algunas reglas que hay que seguir. Look at these rules. When we talk about the simple present, We can have affirmative sentences, negative sentences, and interrogative statements or sentences, right? 
affirmative negative questions. And we have the use of different people or subjects. Si se fijan, podemos utilizar y hablar de cualquier sujeto. En este caso, utilizamos pronombres. I, you, he, she, it, we, and they. So, ¿cuál es la fórmula para hacer una oración afirmativa? Subject, verb, complement. Subject, verb, and complement. For a negative sentence or negative sentences in this case. Subject, auxiliary, plus not, verb in complement. If you remember for questions and form, negative in questions, ¿qué necesito para esto con el simple present? Para oraciones negativas y preguntas. Un auxiliar, ¿qué auxiliar utilizamos? Pongámosle así, auxiliary, do, or, does. Para el afirmativo no necesito auxiliar. Para el negativo, pregunta sí, do, and does. Para pregunta do, le agregamos el not, does, y le agregamos not. Para pregunta al inicio, le agregamos do, or does, depende de mí. Sujeto. Right. Remember. La importancia del simple present tense es identificar cuando estoy hablando de una tercera persona. He, she, or it. ¿Por qué? Porque con esas tres personas tengo que agregar a e or es at the end of the verb. And also the auxiliary is going to be does. It's not going to be do. Aquí tenemos. Esto lo voy a compartir con ustedes también. Right. Entonces ese sería como un resumen en palabras rápidas del simple present tense. So... Let me stop sharing. Quiero escuchar sus comentarios, preguntas. ¿Cómo estamos con el simple present tense? Antes que podamos irnos a la práctica. Questions about the simple present tense. Yes, Ivania, I know you have questions. <laughs> Solo se ríe, Ivania. Ay, lo siento, es que Rita me estaba hablando. Ah, ok, don't worry. So, Rita has questions, right? <laughs> sí, es la culpa. Ajá, and where is Rita? I cannot see you, Rita. Ay, <laughs> no, miss. <laughs> Tell no, me. Nos tomó, nos tomó, no sé cómo se dice en inglés, con las manos en la masa, estábamos hablando, que no nos pregunte, que no nos pregunte. <laughs> ok, you know. Este, ¿hay preguntas o no? No hay preguntas. Nos tomó con las manos en la masa. No, don't worry, don't worry. No. La idea es este, solo aclarar dudas. Yes, tell me. No. <risa> Miss, en este tiempo, yeah. eh, digamos, eh, nos podría dar como cuáles son como las, las clave, lo clave, digamos. Sé que el verbo uh -huh. siempre va en sus formas simples, o sea, no cambia, ¿verdad? Uh -huh, no bien. sé, algunas unos tips. Reglas. Que no sé. para rec o reglas para reconocerlo rápidamente que estamos en ese tiempo. Más que toda la estructura es reglas. Saben que a veces es mejor aprender sin reglas, pero porque así no nos confundimos. No estoy pensando si estoy siguiendo bien la regla, sino aprender a usarlo de una manera espontánea. But don't worry. Subject. Bueno, hagámoslo con ustedes mismos. I work um, um, ¿Qué pongo? Pongámosle, I work at home. Miren esta oración. Yo trabajo en casa. Ayúdenme a identificar entonces cuál sería nuestra regla de structure that we need to follow 
to make affirmative sentences. ¿Qué necesitamos? Subject. Plus. ¿Qué sigue? Uh -huh. Después del sujeto, que tengo? Verb. Verb. The verb in the base form. Plus complement. Complement. You see? It's not difficult. Afirmativas no es nada difícil. I work at home. She works at home. Subject, verb, and complement. I go to school. I wake up early. Okay, give me some activities. ¿Qué actividades hacen en la mañana ustedes? Give me some examples. What do you do every morning? Yes, let me listen to you. At the work, I uh, read in the email. I read emails, okay. Uh -huh. Acuerden, sujeto, verbo, complemento. I read emails, I take calls, I talk to my friends, I have breakfast, sujeto, verbo, complemento. Tantas ideas, tantos ejemplos que podemos usar. Right. I uh, drink coffee. I drink water. You see? Examples of activities that you do in the present. And that is for affirmative. Subject, verb, and complement. If we talk about a third person, we are going to have these rules. Miren esto. Let's see, I guess I have another one. It's here. When we talk about the simple present with the third person, ¿por qué no les pongo ejemplo de negativo y de pregunta? Porque en negativo y pregunta con la tercera persona no va a cambiar el verbo porque tengo un auxiliar. Entonces tienen que enfocarse, tercera persona, affirmative, mostly. Porque ahí es donde aplicamos nuestra regla. He, she, and it. He watches TV. He teaches English. He washes his clothes. She misses her friend. You see? And here we have the rules. Aquí tienen las reglas para los verbos. If the verb is ending in TCH or CH, we are going to add ES. If the verb is ending in SH, SS or O, we are going to use ES. And so on. Repito. ¿Por qué no pongo ejemplos de negativo y pregunta? Porque tengo auxiliar. Y el auxiliar no me deja modificar mi verbo con la tercera persona ni con ningún otro sujeto. Right. Entonces, para el simple present, el enfoque es afirmativo, tercera persona. Siempre sigo la misma estructura. Subject, verb, complement. Right. Pero... Tenemos que tener cuidado si agrego ES or S at the end of the verb. Right? And that's it. She takes call every morning. She reads emails in the morning. She wakes up at 6 a.m. She goes to work by car. You see those examples? So these are the rules that you need to follow. Let's go to practice, you know, so you can practice. I have a short, this is not an exam. This is more like a game. So you can identify the correct use of the third person. And I will have all of you participating. Take a look at this one. Mostly, these are affirmative sentences. La mayoría de estas preguntas son afirmativas por las reglas, right? So we are going to practice. This is a quiz, a very interactive quiz. 
So, what do we need to do? Miren la indicación aquí abajo. Choose the correct form of the verb. So, here we go. El primero que tengo es Jorge. Jorge, you're going to start with the first question. Okay. So, be careful and be ready. Here we go. Okay. Be ready. Okay. She a beer every Saturday. A, B, or C, Jorge? B. Janira, you are the next one. Let me see. Excellent job, Jorge. Janira, here we go with your second. Okay, be ready, please. Oy. Relax, this is easy. <laughs> e, an apple every day for breakfast. A, B, or C? It's a letter A. It's. Gabby, you're next. You're ready, please. Excellent job, Janira. Thank you. Okay, Gabby, here we go. Question number three. He always his wallet when we go out. Uh, letter A. Are you sure? Yeah. For gets, not seats. Ivania, you're the next one. Okay. Be ready. Ah, these are like extra points. No way, no, this is just extra. Ivania, which one do you pick? Pick one, just pick one. Um, the second. Okay, let's see. Okay. <laughs> okay, Oops. don't worry. Oopsie, I'm sorry. Don't you worry, we can earn some other points. Here we go. Okay, I, take a look at the subject. I, to a school. A. Okay. Are you sure? That's okay. Let me have Rita. Rita, get ready, please. Okay. We. B. Three dogs. A or B? Remember, this is an irregular verb. So, we have. That's okay. Do I have root? Tengo a root. Root? Oh, Here we go. Be ready. Be ready, Root. This is for you. She loves to read, but she. Hey. Uh -huh. A, B, C, or D? A, B, C, D. 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 Okay, veamos clases. Mm, ¿Qué pasó ahí? ¿Sería don mm. o cuál sería el auxiliar correcto? Da, senda. Tercero, but don't worry, don't worry. Ay, hola, Be careful. <laughs> Eden Nilsson, help me out. Eden Nilsson. Póngame otra, <laughs> Okay, después vamos, okay, vamos con Roto otra vez. Which one? ¿Cuál elige? One, two, three, four, or five. El, el primero. Okay, let me see if we have extra points. Well, excellent, there we go. Muy bien, Ruth. Vaya, veamos, Ruth. Vamos con usted y luego con Eden Nilsson. Don't you worry. Okay. Question number seven. Esa es una negativa. I don't like his music because... Estamos hablando de he. Negativo. Sería don't sing or doesn't sing. Okay, or B. Okay. Let's see. Very good job. Excellent. You did an excellent job. Eden Nilsson. This is your time. 
Okay. Mm -hmm. Question number eight is for you. She is shy. She is shy. Ella es penosa, callada. So A, B, C, or D. C. She don't speak. C? Uh, no, D. 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 Uh, D doesn't. Very good job. Speak generally. She doesn't speak. There you go. There you go. Alberto. Go ahead, please. The sun. Every day at 6. Every a. day at 6 a.m. Mm -hmm. eh, sería... This is an mm. affirmative sentence. Affirmative. Okay, B. Okay. Wait, Josue, you're next. Excellent job. Here we go. Ah, but before the question, you need to pick. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, one. Veamos si tenemos puntos extras o nos quitan puntos. Let me see. Oh, aquí va más rápido la pregunta. Be ready. Be ready. Here we go. The homework difficult. A, B, C, or D. The homework is affirmative. A. A. So, yes, letter A was the correct one. The homework seems very difficult. So, you did an excellent job, Taz. Si se fijan, casi todas eran affirmative, and we only had one, two negative sentences. So, remember, the simple present tense is not difficult. We only need to practice. So, you did an excellent job. Questions about this topic? Pregunto sobre este tema. Yes, no. No questions? No. If not, you see, we can move on. For today, we're going to have, well, for this week, we are going to have section number three. I was checking the contents and the activities from section number three, and they are quite easy, you know, quite easy activities. So if you see, we have new topics for this lesson, and one of the topics is about going shopping. Uno de los temas es ir a comprar, algo que hacemos regularmente, right? Ir a comprar, but how do we express ourselves in English? This is what we are going to learn. So let's watch this very short video. This is a conversation and then we can practice. Here we go. They're perfect for you. These red ones? Um, yeah. What? Okay, I don't know what happened. Let me try it again. No quiere que lo escuchemos. Section number three, this is the first video. They are perfect for you. Veamos ahora. Hi, we're now in section three. What is your neighborhood like? Please pay attention and try to understand the audio as much as possible. Remember, you may access to this conversation as many times as needed. I recommend for you to take notes while you are listening. In this lesson, participants will listen to a conversation about demonstratives while shopping. Oh, look at those earrings, Maria. They're perfect for you. These red ones? I'm not sure. No, the yellow ones. Oh, these? Hmm, yellow isn't really a good color for me. Well, that necklace isn't bad. Which one? That blue one right there. How much is it? It's $42. That's expensive. Hey, let me get it for you. It's your birthday present. Happy birthday. Could you identify what is the conversation about? 
What is the conversation about? Pudieron identificar de qué se trata la conversation. What is this conversation about? Uh -huh. ¿De qué fue la conversación? ¿O fue muy rápida? It was really fast. Acerca del cumple, ella está cumpliendo años. It was the boys or girls' birthday. Who was this birthday? Girls. Girls, Girl. right? Exactly. So, look, this is the topic. Section number three. Um, how much is it? We are going to talk about prices. Prices, right? And for today's class, this is the topics that we are going to cover. The demonstratives and one and ones, those expressions. <sighs> So here we go. So look, they are perfect for you exactly. So whose birthday is it? Whose birthday is it? It's the girl's birthday. What's her name? Maria. Mm -hmm. Maria. And what's his name? Steve. Steve. So Steve and Maria, they are talking about something. Where do you think they are at this moment? Where are they at this moment? Where are they? In a store. What type of a store? Uh, jewelry, I don't know. Exactly, there we go. Jewelry store, or we can also say in a department store. Una tienda de joyería, oye, también le llamamos department store. Okay, department store. There we go. So, Steve and Maria. Oh, look at those earrings. Look at those earrings. Maria, they are perfect for you. These red ones, mm, I'm not sure. No. The yellow ones. Oh, these. Mm, yellow isn't really a good color for me. Well, that necklace isn't bad. Which one? That blue one right there. How much is it? It's $42. Wow, that's expensive. Hey. Let me get it for you. It's your birthday present. Happy birthday. So look at the expressions that I have in the red boxes. ¿Qué expresiones ven en las cajitas rojas? Those, these, that. No, this, those, this, these, that. that. ¿Cómo le llamamos a estas expresiones? Those, this, and that. Mm -hmm. Son demonstrative. Demonstrative. ¿Por qué? ¿De qué palabra le suena similar en español? Demonstrative. Yes. Look at those earrings. These red ones. Eh, esto, eso. Esto y eso. ¿Qué estamos haciendo cuando utilizamos estos? Adjetivos demonstrativos. Indicando, right? So, in English, we have, miren, tenemos dos tipos de demonstrativos. Adjectives and pronouns as well. Tenemos dos tipos. Vamos a identificar cuál estamos utilizando en esta conversación. Adjectives or pronouns. Adjectives or pronouns. This chair is broken. This is a demonstrative adjective. Porque está describiendo al nombre que en este caso es la silla. This chair is broken. That car is expensive. These clothes are wet. Those birds are flying south. So demonstrative adjectives. Y los pronombres. Cuando decimos que son pronombres es que sirven como un sujeto. This is my chair. That is Peter's house. Si se fijan, pronombres y adjetivos. Pronombres y adjetivos, right. 
So, si se fijan en la conversación, ¿qué estaremos utilizando? Pronombres o adjetivos. Those earrings. Look at those earrings. That blue one is right there. Adjetivos, teacher. Adjetivos, right? Miren. Exactamente. Estamos utilizando adjetivos. Así que también esta información se la voy a compartir. Adjetivos. So if you see, they are talking about prices. Prices about the earrings. So if we talk about saying prices in English, it's not that difficult. Of course, we are going to express prices with cents or with dollars, or we can have both dollars plus cents. Podemos expresarlos con centavos, con dólares exactos, o dólares más centavos. Right, so saying prices, how do we read in English prices? How much is seat? How much are? Of course, if we're talking about a product, only one product, we're going to use is. How much is? But if I'm talking about more than one item or one product, I'm going to use are. So look at the examples. How much is? this t-shirt how much is this one how much are these sneakers how much are these okay cuánto vale esto esos o estos eso y esos cerca y lejos Vean las imágenes, ¿cuál entonces ocupamos? ¿Cuál adjetivo demostrativo ocupamos para cosas que están cerca? ¿Cuáles ocupamos? For objects that are near. Singular. Muy bien. Plural. This. This. Yes. Right. Y cuando uh -huh. tengo los objetos lejos, for... ¿Cuál voy a ocupar? That. Singular. That. Singular, aquello. Lejos. Dos. 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 Bien. Como les mencioné, esto es un repaso de todo lo que vimos en el primer módulo. Right? Solo que le agregamos eh, cosas extras. En este caso, same prices. Y agregamos one and ones. So, near. This, this. Far. That and those. Bien, so, how much are these? How much is this? Right? So, if you see, we can also replace, podemos reemplazar un nombre por esta expresión. One and ones. Para no hacerlo como repetitivo. No repetir la misma expresión en la pregunta y en la respuesta. Podemos reemplazarlo por un, eh, llamémosle nombre. Ese es un nombre, right. Vamos a reemplazar en este caso t-shirt por una de estas dos expresiones. One and ones. How much is this t-shirt? O podemos decir how much is this one, que significaría esta. How much is this one? How much are these sneakers? How much are these? How much is that t-shirt? How much is that one? Right? Do forma de expresar. Las mismas ideas. Okay, veamos how much is this cell phone. ¿Cuánto vale este teléfono? Misma expresión utilizando one or once. ¿Cómo lo cambiaríamos? Utilicemos one or once. Quiero escucharlos. How much is this one? Uh -huh. 
Si se fijan, identificamos si es singular o plural. How much is... How much is the cell phone? How much is this one? Somos más específicos. Uh -huh. How much is the yellow um, shirt? ¿Cómo pasamos esta utilizando one or ones? Reemplacemos el nombre por one or ones. Uh -huh. How much Oswe. is this one? How much is? Pero acá no estoy ocupando this, estoy ocupando the... Quiero sustituir nada más yellow shirt. ¿Cómo hago acá? How much is? The... The one. This. Yellow one. Yellow one. Uh -huh. The yellow one. Teacher, y en este caso en el demostrativo, entonces. Uh -huh. En la segunda oración. Uh -huh. eh, no, les estoy dando el contexto que puede ser demostrativo o, si se fijan en el libro, puede ser también utilizando otro tipo de expresiones. No solo demostrativos. Pero si ustedes quieren ponerlo también demostrativo, that's okay. Podríamos decir, how much is this yellow shirt? How much is that yellow shirt? That's okay. Si quieren reemplazarlo, hagamos. Pongamos uno con dos. How much are those? Those blue shoes. ¿Cuánto valen esos zapatos azules? Reemplacémoslo por one or ones, please. Uh -huh. Veamos. How much? Has the, how much? How much? Has Are Voy a escribir ones. lo mismo. How much are, are those? those? Que oh, quiero reemplazar el nombre Blue Shoes. Entonces, those. Ones. Decir blue? ¿Puedo decir blue ones. Puedo decir el color también. Blue ones. One. O también puedo decir how much are those ones? Aquellos. How much are those ones? But if I want to be more specific, how much are those blue ones? Right. So if you see, ¿en qué caso voy a utilizar singular? Cuando tengo un solo objeto. Cuando voy a utilizar plural, ones. Cuando estoy hablando de cosas, objetos en plural. Zapatos es plural. Right. So this is plural, ones. Teacher, pero ahí no sería blue Ajá. ones porque es un par de zapatos, es zapatos. Ajá, porque si pregunto es... con singular, ¿qué pasaría? Solo un zapato. Solo pregunto de un zapato y es algo que no hacemos regularmente, ¿verdad? Y de uno. Te... A menos Ajá. que digamos el par de zapatos, ¿verdad? El no? par de zapatos, ok, entonces ahí... ¿Cómo sería? How much is that? Pair of shoes. Uh -huh. Pero sí, ahí no te ocupamos uh -huh. one. Is that one? Is... How much is that? ¿Cómo lo expresamos? Pero siempre sigue plural, no puedo ponerlo en singular. Siempre. Uh -huh. Ajá, no podemos. Expresar. One pair. No, is no lo podemos pair poner. Is that Is that one? No, no se puede. So, no, we cannot. Si queremos utilizar ones, no podemos mezclarlo con el nombre. Porque si no, no puedo decir one pair of shoes. No. Algo que sí quiero dejar claro es que en sí, 
no se refiere a cantidad, sino lo estamos ocupando como para reemplazar, en este caso, al nombre. Cell phone, digo one. Yellow sí, shirt. Sir. Yes, tell me. Y en ese caso, how much is, is the cell phone? Uh -huh. eh, ahí nos falta how much is this one. In the second. Hey, that's right. Thank you. Sí, sí. Muy observativo. Here. Agregamosle much. Muy bien. Gracias. Thank you for the correction. Like this one. So how much is this one? ¿Cuánto vale esto? ¿Cuánto vale eso? Right. So how much is this one? How much are those ones? Bien. Let me give you one minute. Un minuto para tomar nota de esto. Si no, vamos a movernos a la práctica. You're going to ask about prices. How much is this one? How much are this one? Very good. So, same prices. Expressing prices in English is not that difficult. We just need to know how to read numbers in English, right? So, for example, how much is this one? ¿Cómo leemos esto? How much is this one? Leamos esa cantidad. ¿Cuánto vale esto? How much is this one? This it's fourteen ninety nine. It's fourteen. Luego decimos dollars and ninety nine y at the end cents. Expresiones que necesitamos incluir. Dólares centavos. Ok, la palabra dólar y centavo va. En nuestra expresión, it's fourteen dollars and ninety nine cents. Or we can also say it's fourteen and ninety nine. It's fourteen and ninety nine. Pero para ser más claros y específicos y saber que estamos hablando de dólares, incluyamos it's fourteen dollars and ninety nine cents. Class, how much is this one? It's is it's twenty two dollars and and ninety five cents. And ninety five cents. Very good job, Rita. How much is this one, Rita? Forty-five dollar forty forty-nine dollars uh -huh. um, uh, ninety-nine uh, cents. Cents, very good. Josué, how much is this one? It's fifty dollars uh, uh -huh. and and 55 cents. Very good job. $50 and 55 cents. Ellen Nilsson, how much is this one? <laughs> Imagine this price. Ellen Nilsson. Hi, teacher. How much it's, is this one? Uh -huh. It's $100. <laughs> and... <laughs> Zero one cents. ¿Cómo lo leeríamos, clase? One cent. En one cent only. Y un centavo. Cien dólares y un centavo. Right, excellent. Samuel, how much is this one? Pongamos a very expensive price. How much is this one? Samuel. Uno más difícil quieres. Ah, okay. I can change the, 
the price. But no, let's start with this one. ¿Cómo leemos esto? ¿Cuánto vale esto? Here we go. Say okay. it. It's a little. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm well. I'm ready to listen to you. Uh, 195. 195. 194. 194. Ah, 1,000, 1,000, 9, 4. I don't know. Okay, Carlos, do you want to try? Don't worry, go. 1,964, 95 pounds. Okay, very good, 1,954 dollars and 95 cents. Quiero una cantidad más grande. ¿Cuánto vale? Libras le dije. Libras le dije. Dólares, come on. Dólares. <laughs> We're talking about dólares. Bitcoins, me van a decir. No, dólares. <laughs> right? No, bitcoins in this class. Veamos cuánto vale. With 99 cents. Ok, veamos. Alberto. How much is this one? It's 2,700. Hundred fifty eight ninety dollars and fifty nine cents. Ninety nine cents. Very good job. So these are like expensive or like bigger quantities, but we need to learn how to express as well in English. No sé si ustedes manejan precios en lo que hacen a diario. Manejan precios? Yes. 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 How do you say euro, teacher? Euros. How do you say euros, class? Si manejan esa cantidad, not only dollars, right? Uh -huh. <laughs> o lo expresan en español nada más, no en inglés. Español. ¿Solo expresan ustedes cantidades en español o también en inglés? En... We check in Spanish. Cantidades in Spanish, en euros. Right? But... Depende, depende de la Oh, so it depends, right? So, yes, in this case, eh, it's the same way. In este caso, leeríamos la misma cantidad, porque las cantidades en inglés no cambian. Lo que cambiaría en este caso es la currency, la moneda, right? Dollars and everything, right? So, let's go and practice right now. So you can have a clear idea about this topic. Look at this exercise. This is the last activity for today. So you are going to express yourself in English. Mire, you are going to add prices. Van a agregar precios. Siguiendo este patrón de conversación. A, B, A, B, and A. How much are these books? Tienen que tener cuidado. Si están hablando de ¿Ah? O plural. Miren, tenemos dos ejemplos de plural. Glasses and boots. Y solo un ejemplo de singular. Cap. Una gorra. Cap. Okay. How much are these boots? Which one? ¿Cuáles? Les pregunta. The brown ones. That's café. They are 95 dollars and 50 cents. That's expensive. Right? ¿Qué vamos a hacer? Vamos a elegir o a preguntar por un objeto en específico. Puede ser este o este. Right. Puede ser la gorra gris o la azul. Pueden ser los sunglasses red o pink. Right. Si se fijan, hay dos opciones. Two different colors. Same item. And I need you to use as well these expressions at the end. That's cheap. Eso es barato. Mm, that's reasonable. No es razonable el precio. Mm, that's okay. That's not bad. Or that's expensive. Veamos si podemos hacer la práctica ahorita. Let me have Gustavo. Is Gustavo there? Gustavo. Hello. 
Quiero que Gustavo me pregunte por este objeto. Vamos. Gustavo. Mm. Ahora no sé si en inglés. Cap. Cap. Uh -huh. Oh. The, the cup is expensive. Mm, pero ask me for the price. Pregúntame por el precio. Ah. Please. Okay. Uh, how much is the cup? Which one? Is, uh -huh. is the blue cup? Uh, it's five dollars and fifty cents. Um, that's expensive. Really? That's not expensive. Okay. Yes, that, that cheap. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, it's just five dollars. Okay, <laughs> Ivania. Discount for the... <laughs> Hello. Okay. How much are these boots? Which ones? The I don't know. What is this color? <laughs> I guess it's light brown. Okay, the brown ones. The brown ones. Uh they are one hundred. $25.50. Oh, that's expensive. Really? But, uh -huh. Yes, but I want to, please. Well, <laughs> okay. <laughs> she got money. Vania got money. Very good. <laughs> She's a rich lady. That's okay. Let me ask. She's a rich Carlos. lady. Carlos. Ha, ha. Yes, Carlos. Pink glasses. Pink pair of glasses. Déjame chequear que tengo un problema con mi máquina que no se ve la pantalla. Estoy haciendo aquí. Okay, don't nuevo. worry. If you want, we can continue with Yanira and then you, Yanira. Okay. Hi, teacher. Okay. Me pregunta cuánto valen esos <laughs> pink sunglasses. Go. How much are these glasses? Which ones? Uh, the pink ones? Oh, they are $95.50. 95 That's expensive. <laughs> Why, no? You know oh what God. I like it? <laughs> Me encanta esa expresión salvadoreña, right? <laughs> you know That's expensive. Es que ella sí es, ticha. Qué mono es. Como ella. No, I like it. Es natural. Yeah, right. Eso son no super natural. No, I teacher. like it. That's expensive. No, that's very cheap. I like it. Me encanta. Eden Nilsson. Probemos con Eden Nilsson. Oh, Carlos, are you ready? She is a usual expression. <laughs> really? Are you ready, Carlos? Or can I continue with Eden Nilsson? Uh, okay, but I feel a little uh -huh. Okay, this is a gray cup. Gray cup. Gray, gray, and blue and gray there. Uh -huh. uh -huh, exactly. Okay, so ask me for the price. How much? Um, how much? The cup. Which one? Gray. Ah, the gray one. Uh, yeah. It is um, $25.95. Is reasonable. That's reasonable. Okay. Excellent job. Ellen Nilsson, let's continue with you and then Gary. This one's. How much are these books? Which ones? The brown house. The brown one. The brown, the brown one. one. Yes. Uh, they are two hundred fifty dollars and ninety five cents. That's okay. Not bad. <laughs> okay. Excellent. Great job, Gabriela. Please ask me for 
the red sunglasses. Mm, how much are those red sunglasses? Uh, they are $95.50. Um, that's cheap. That's cheap, okay. Yes. <laughs> Very good job. $95, that's okay. Jorge, let's continue with you. How much is this? No, some, okay. Yeah. How much are these boots? Which ones? The brown ones. Oh, uh, they are ninety-five dollars and fifty cents. And that's okay. That's okay. Very good job. So, pongamos otro ejemplo. ¿Por qué más podemos preguntar? ¿Qué es lo que usualmente compramos? Teacher. Uh -huh. okay. oh. Teacher, uh, sorry. Uh, como diríamos, me lo llevo. I, I take it. Lo llevo. I take, take. it. I take oh, okay. it. Okay. I take it, yeah. ¿Qué usualmente compramos, digamos, en, en una tienda o en las mañanas? How much are these pupusas? Right? ¿Cómo yeah. responde? Yeah, how much are these pupusas? They are 65 cents each. Dollar. Uh -huh. There are three which? for one dollar. There are three for one dollar. Yeah, uh -huh. the express. Oh, that's cheap. Eso es barato, eso. That's cheap, right? <laughs> but that's expensive, right? So, vamos a continuar con este ejercicio, pero mañana con cantidades más grandes, para ponerlo en el contexto de ustedes, ¿ok? Lean cantidades grandes y me dieron muy buena idea, poniendo diferentes eh, monedas, no solo dólares, sino que puedan expresarse con otro tipo de monedas, no solo en lo que hacemos Dios. en la vida real. Right, very good job. So, Teacher, tell me. Y plataforma en la 2.11, donde está el listen de... Ahí como que no, no, bueno, al menos a mí no me toma la respuesta. Ya las puse en, en letras, en números, que nos pregunta la rutina de cada uno. Dos Entonces, ahorita, veamos. ¿Cuál, Jorge? ¿La dos? Sí, la dos, de donde sale, creo que Bradley. ¿La del chef? Sí, el del chef. Sí, sí, yo también no, no, no me deja pasar. ¿Cómo no? Pero yo sí le voy a ayudar. Puede. Ah, bye. Gracias. A mí no me carga una parte de, de la dos. Es verdad, daily sketches. Veamos. Ah, ok, creo que es por las expresiones. Time expression. Les voy a compartir si quieren el cuadrito que nos correspondía. Eso nos correspondía ver el jueves. Right. Time expressions, para que ah. les ayude, se guíen con la tabla que les voy a enviar y así puedan responder. Si no, respondemos mañana como primer ejercicio, este, el 2.11. Ok. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Sounds good. Take care. So, we are going See to you stop tomorrow. Right here. See you tomorrow, one o'clock. Ok. Bye bye, okay. class. It was a pleasure. Have a great day. Bye, Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. Bye.